Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. You want to sing? No, I don't like the song. Why don't you like the song? I like the other one. Huh? I like the other one. Well, you can't have the other one. Boom, You're talking about this one. Oh, wait a minute. Put it back no, I on. can't. Why? Because uh, I get in trouble when I play it. Just once? No, I, not just once. Then I have to write letters to YouTube saying I have rights to the song, and then they have to get, well, you know, it because it, if for some reason they screwed up. Hold on a second. Let me just. It's uh, hot in here. What, it is hot in here? Yeah. Oh, well, anyway. Can you there put the she fan is. On? There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I can turn the fan on. There you go. Are you happy? You know. She's always got to have the fan on. Well, it doesn't What, are you going to strip? I'm stripping. You're stripping? Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Okay, anyway, how are, you, how are you doing? Well, considering it's our first day of heat, it, after, what, two days of no heat in wh- the winter? Why, why haven't we had heat? Is what, that's what the I don't get, is why don't we have... wrong with the boiler. Oh, did they say that? I think there was a sign downstairs. Of course, you never go out. No, so. no, I saw a sign yesterday that said we wouldn't have heat Well, it was water, the same sign. Hot water. It was the same sign. Today? No, yesterday. Yeah, well, that was a sign saying that we wouldn't get hot water. Well, the, whatever makes the hot water probably cleaned yeah. out. Yeah, well, you know. Heat. No heat. No heat. Oh, boy, it was cold. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you noticed, but I slept totally under the covers last night, head included. Yeah, I know. I couldn't <laughs> even kiss you goodnight. I mean, I was totally under the covers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I uh, uh, it was uh, a, um, it, but they didn't, for some reason, that we didn't get heat here for, God, it had to be three nights. Yeah, it was And it was cold. really cold. It was cold. And that's against the law. Well, it was probably broken, and they didn't say anything. Yeah, but that boiler keeps breaking all the time. Why don't they get a new boiler? Because we've got slum landlords. That's, that's the why. same boiler they had to turn off when they turned off our water for, for our six ho- months. What was it? Our hot, uh, our gas. Gas for six months. Yeah, and he fought to keep the boiler going. Thank that was God. what it is. Because the, the the fire department when they come in and there's something wrong, they turn off they, everything. Oh, they break every pane of glass they can find in sight. They, Go through the elevators. Literally, when we had a fire a couple here, of years ago, a couple of years ago, there we have like a, a, you know an elevator that goes up, and then on each floor there's a foyer outside, right? With glass. Up eight floors, they went up to each floor and, and broke, broke the, the glass, glass in every single one of them, even though the fire was on the first floor. Right. It was on the second floor. Yeah, yeah. They love doing that. Oh, good. We're having a fire. Let's break stuff. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so that, uh, but we haven't had, uh, we've been we've been freezing our ass off in here. and I, It's I, been cold. That, I mean, I spent the entire night under the covers, head included. I know, I saw. And I, pillows on top I, of I went me. in, I couldn't find you. It was like, <laughs> I finally found some portion of your body that I could kiss goodnight. <laughs> but uh, it was not, it was not good. It was no, terrible. it was cold. Anyway, it's yeah. it's back on now. Yeah, to so, the point where it's so hot, I had to open the windows. <laughs> so my kudos to Damien for having played uh, that uh, that the uh, video. The video. Well, he played the audio. Of the yeah, video. The audio uh, because he doesn't do a video show. Oh uh, no! I, I didn't know that. actually, I would love to get all our shows doing video, and I know that I could I could probably teach Damien how to do it, and he would probably I guess do it. You know. We'll practice uh, it, with the, them. No, but uh, it, so far as Jack is concerned. Well, start with Damien. I mean, Jack is, is challenged. I had enough problems getting him to be able to do audio. <laughs> Jack is challenged. Do yeah. you hear me, Jack? You're challenged. We know yeah. that. Yeah. So, I mean, I would love to see all our shows go to video. Um, mainly because I'm finding now that we have video. Yeah. The audio listenership is completely Because they want to see waned. you. Because they'd rather see well, you. Well, what happens is some of them go over to gabnet.net to listen to it. And there's a thing you can push there. And it says click to hear the audio. But then right below it, is live, the, is, is the video. So why don't they just listen to that? You know, so 
that's the reason for that. If you don't want to know where to get the video, that's one of the easiest places, gabnet.net. But if you want to actually get the, the video page, which you can then tab in your browser, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, youtube.com forward slash Bolo Bennett forward slash live. And then you live. get a page that when I'm not on, it has a countdown until the next show. Oh. And when I go on, you don't have to do anything. It's just, boom, there we are, you know, just like I can see here. And it's, it's actually, I have to admit it, flawless. It, the, in, we've been doing this, what, about two months now with uh, YouTube? Yeah. Never once has it gone down. In that time, Facebook, I, I don't care if it goes down once now. Facebook in that time would have gone down at least three or four times. Yeah. You know, or the video would have been live. It, 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 I, you know. Facebook's version is so fucked. It's ridiculous. Well, I watch it on your Facebook, but it's it's the day after. No, you're watching you're watching the video of it, right. which there's no problem with that, you know. Yeah, it's not live. Um, and you can go over to YouTube and see it there too. Um, Are so, you still on live stream? Yeah, I'm still on live stream. I don't know why. Well, why not? Well, why not? A good reason why not. Forty nine bucks a month. Oh. But I've been keeping it because they have a great kind of studio thing where I could switch a show and so on, but I never use it. So I'm thinking of dropping it. Well, you know, I have see. no, it, no, but it, it, I get three people a day that watch it on live stream. And it, since it doesn't port to anywhere else, I just found out with Vimeo, uh, if I put my thing on Vimeo, I can say, put it on Facebook, and then it will put it on Facebook with a notation to all my uh, followers, which is about 5,000 of them that there's a video there. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, I'm thinking of rather than putting the video directly onto my Facebook page to go through Vimeo to do it. We'll, we'll see, we'll experiment with it. Whatever. But uh, you can get it in any number of ways, uh, the video. You can even Roku, you know. We post it to Roku every night. Uh, you can see the video. Uh, we just watched What's a little on, video on, of last night's show on, watched, on our big uh, television. 4K set, you know. That was a great show, by the way. Last night's show was exceptional. Was exceptional. What do you... I, I, I just, you always have to play well, I don't know stuff. what it is. What I is just, it? Every time I, t every time I listen to a playback of the shows with you, at some point I'm going, what are you touching that for? <laughs> you have so many things. That's the uh, charger. Oh, the fast charger. Faster the faster. charger. It's not fast, 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 you know. What What are you charging now? Um, uh, what am I charging? Uh, nothing, I don't think. What, at this what's point. this thing blinking? Well, that's just, it. it's also got a, uh, what, why am I explaining all of this when we're doing the show? Uh, this thing is a battery oh. that you can take out of there and take with oh. you. And then if you run out of battery power on your iPhone or you whatever, you can use that to charge it. Wow. See? Yeah. yeah. How about that? Yeah, but I never use that. I just bought that because it was at Costco and it looked good. It does look good. And it good. was like 30 bucks or something. So uh, it's a fast charger. They don't have them anymore. So yeah, it's one of those things they put in there and then they don't have them anymore. But you could find it online. Oh, I'm sure I can find that online. But it, it, you know, it, does, it does the job. And it's got three USB ports out of there. And it's so. fast. Yeah. So I put my phone in there. I put the tablet in there. I do the... Uh, the uh, 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 what do you call it? The do you still use the GoPro? tablet that I got you? That one? Yeah. Yeah, I've got it in the other room. Oh. I, it's not that I use it. I check to see. See, we are. We have a app for Android. If you go into the Android store or whatever the store is, a Google Play store, that's it. Uh, you just uh, look up Great American Broadcast and... Uh, you will find an app for it. And the app is there. And what it does, it will play a limited number of shows. It used to play the live show, but it doesn't anymore because we changed the live stream. And the guy who put the thing together for us is no longer... It's, it's all right. He we, got into some kind of fight with Albert okay. about some business deal they had. And then he stopped talking to me and wouldn't... He said he couldn't talk to me because the lawyer said, don't talk to me. Well, now you could probably talk to well, him. Well, every now and then I get a hold of him. He says, not yet. And I go, you know, <laughs> Albert's moved to Florida. You know, he's long gone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I really, so I might write him and just say, is there any way we could get that uh, live thing, you know, the 24-7 thing there? So anyway, but anyway. Uh, Tell that, him to come over as an alias. 
it came over as an alias. Yeah, give him another name. Joe's coming over Joe's today. Joe's coming over today, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I liked him, too. He was the guy who invented Auto Alex. Oh, from way back when. Which was the thing way back when that was the precursor and really the prototype for uh, for iTunes. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, because what he did is I, I, I was out of work. Uh, as, as I was from time to time. And I, so I, I figured I, I'd do a show every day on the internet. But the only way you could do it in those days, you couldn't do them live particularly. If you wanted to, it was very expensive. So I would record it and just put it on my site and then people could download it mm -hmm. or they could just click on it and listen to it. So he came up with, he said, I, I, I invented this thing for you. I said, what is it? And he, he said, I call it Auto Alex. All they do is they, you put, they put it on your, they download it from your site, they put it on their computer. Then they tell it to just every day, just go to your site and grab the file. And so I said, okay, and then they download it, yeah, and then when they come home every day, your it's show there. will be there waiting for them. Wow. Well, what does that sound like to you? It's iTunes. It's, uh, you know, it's the way uh, iTunes uh, delivers podcasts. It's hmm. the same identical thing. And we literally, he invented it, and we implemented it. Okay, and um, so that's the guy. Give I did Alex it with. a call. That's the guy I did it with, and then he got he I got, got him involved in here. The, here he kind of helped me get this whole thing together technically, and I thank him for that. And uh, then uh, he got into business with Albert on something. A concept. I, can't I don't think it got some, more than some a concept. Concept. Yeah, but somehow for some reason. It became a legal case between the two of them. They had a falling and out. And he couldn't talk to me because I knew Albert. <laughs> and I'm going, every now and then I would write him and say, is the coast clear yet? <laughs> you know. And I'm, I, I'm sorry I ever got the two of them together, you know, because I, I lost a good technological, a technology person that could be a lot of help to yeah. me. But uh, he's the one that put together, had, he didn't put together the Google uh, uh, app but he had a guy they found in Europe who did it for us. And so he knew where that guy was. And all that guy has to do is to go into the program, change the address, you know, for, uh, uh, for the uh, live feed, and then it could work again. But all the, what, what does still work in there is it does update the, uh, I think it updates the ramble, the exchange, and the intersection. Hmm. And that's it, you know. That's so, enough. Yeah. But it's it, we haven't done anything with it. Most people don't even know it exists. But it's if you have an Android phone, just you know. You know what I'm looking. Here's an observation: uh, what? how what? old people start looking alike. Yeah. Look at us. Wait a minute. What? What I mean? We, just... we both have our plaid flannels oh, on. Uh, our sweatshirts. I have the plaid panel. Yeah, and then you have. Well, we My can't plaid. See yours. Yeah. There you there go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. We, there we go. We are getting to be old people, and then we're wearing our T-shirts too. Yours is for what? New York State. Oh, that's, that's, well, that's Lake Tahoe. You got that when we were married. Yeah. I remember it was real cold. Yeah. We got married on the shores of Lake Tahoe. Yeah. But what's the t-shirt? It's. U.S. Open uh, 2016. Oh, really? That was last year. Two years. Oh, two years ago. I, I didn't get one of those. Yes, you did. No, you, I didn't. I you got get another. one every year, I my dear. Yeah. And a hat. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I like the new hat you got yeah, me okay. last year. Yeah. I like it. I don't. I'm get, I, yeah, I have enough of the same cap of those other ones. That all they did was change the, the year. The year. Not that I care about the U.S. Open, but she is a. I, can I tell you about? Can I tell you how I suffer, folks? My long suffering. Here we go. With tennis. Should I get the little violin out? Yeah. Tell them when you start watching tennis. You tell them. You've got a better story. Uh, it's the Austrian Open. Right. <laughs> The Austrian Open. Which came back to back to the Olympics this year. You know, it was the Australian Open. Right. And she starts watching that. But it doesn't just watch it. You know how, how you would watch uh, this. You Maybe every night you'd settle down and say, oh, who's playing who? Oh, that's nice. This, uh, Venus is is playing tonight, blah, 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 blah. No, she's got to watch every single fucking I don't fucking watch match. every single one. Just the people I'm following. But you're sitting there for hours upon hours upon hours. I enjoy it. 
You sit in front of the computer for hours upon hours. But I'm hours. doing work. Well, this is my pleasure. I work 10-hour days every day. Nobody said you had to. Well, this is my... This is my no, you... No, look, admit why you do a 10-hour day. You don't do a 10-hour day. I really. do 9 to 10. You do... You, and I do work uh, at home. Uh, you, you do. You go in at what time? Six. Six. And you leave when? Three to four. Three. Three, three, three. So three. Do you leave at three? Three, sometimes. Yeah, so it's a nine-hour day, day, and if you yeah. take an hour out for lunch, that's an eight-hour day. take an hour out for lunch. But the reason why you do it is so you can leave at three. Three, which gives me a gr It's like almost like a half a day. Well, you can go do stuff. I can meet a friend and, for and lunch it, it, and not having yeah. to worry oh, about yeah. I can friends go to for a lunch. doctor's appointment. Forget I can friends. get my hair cut. I can go Forget home friends and just for chill lunch. out. She takes that time for two things. Number one... Endless doctor's appointments. It's like a social thing with you. I'm seeing Dr. Schmoody today, and I'm seeing Dr. Booty tomorrow, and I'm seeing Dr. Armpit the day afterwards. And then this woman, the maintenance on her now. Well, it's true. It's, As you get it's, older, it's, the it's, maintenance is higher. It's a lot of maintenance. <laughs> it's, I, it's a motherfucking ton of maintenance. A, I have to agree I, on that. I, I can't believe and, how and, much and maintenance. You and let it sit for I said, what'd you go for today? I had my hair appointment today. Oh, okay. What was it for? Cut. Okay. All right. Where were you today? Uh, my hair appointment. I said, but you had a hair appointment yesterday. No, this was the one to get it colored. Yeah. yeah okay. I, uh, what, 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 what were you doing today? I had to have my nails done. I mean, we may as well just <laughs> go to have a garage, put her up on a rack, and just give her a lube job, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the main, do you find the maintenance is more difficult the older you get? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, what do they do? Like, here to, here's one thing about her. Look at her. Look straight ahead. She never wears lipstick. I wear this. You wear, but you do lip gloss. Yeah. You do cha that's for chap lips. Well, but that's not, you know, but you don't, you don't do lipstick. You never I'll tell done. you why I don't wear lipstick, because I used to bite it, and then it was all over my teeth. Oh. So once or twice a year that I put lipstick on, it would end up being on my teeth, and it, to me, it wasn't worth it. So, but I love eye makeup. I put a lot of eye makeup. Yeah, but you don't do you don't do uh, don't do lips at all. Mm, I never yeah, got. Into I've it. never noticed that you didn't or did. I never particularly cared whether a woman wore, you know, lipstick or not, you know. But uh, that's got to be a real art to put it on right. Oh, what's harder is eyeliner. Oh, really? Well, yeah, you can mess it up, especially if you use liquid and you mess it up and then all of a sudden the line is going in the wrong direction. Yeah, I got to tell you something about her. Well, you're not getting the numbers that you normally get tonight, but let me see here. Oh, well, yeah, we're getting there. Uh, uh, because we're not arguing. I don't want to argue. Oh, I do. Well, we and, have eight minutes. Yeah, eight minutes. Anyway, um, she um, she watches television in a very peculiar manner. We're watching the news. There could be a woman on television <laughs> whose baby just got run over by a truck. I know what you're going to say. And she's on television with the reporter crying her eyes out, and she'll say, do you know one of her eyebrows is higher than the other one? Wait, that's the way you watch people on television. True. I noticed those things. Gee, did, it, it, look well, how bad her makeup is. What was is. one the other day? Some guy with something and you a said... A woman with heavy thighs. A woman with heavy thighs. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, you, you watch just all the physicality of these well, people. Well, it just kind of snaps out. It's, it's kind of snapped out, does it? Oh, really? Oh, okay. I can also pick out nose jobs. Well, or, I, or, or, when I was or, in high school. Or you can pick noses. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. Well. In high school, everyone except me yeah. and my father's nose got nose jobs. So you could just spot it. I mean, I, I can tell even on the television of somebody. But you had a didn't nose need job. a nose job. No, did I you? never had a nose no, job. This you is never. my dad's nose. But I, I fractured it. There's a lump here. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, let me look at old pictures. No, your nose looks fine. Yeah, yeah. But I did fracture it. There's a lump right here. But they all got nose jobs. Well, if you come from a Jewish neighborhood, you know, a lot of the girls yeah, had but, beaks. But I, you know, something. It's call me stupid, call me crazy. I liked the Jewish nose. You know, I liked a woman who had kind of a, a Jewishy nose. Well, a lot of girls didn't. You know, I like brunettes who had Jewish noses. I liked a very Jewish looking this is woman. A Jewish nose. Yeah. I mean, you were my type. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I would have been hot four years ago, but we would have been broken up by now. I would have never, ever dated you. Hmm? Ever. Never? never? Why? Because you, you, you fucked around. Well, well, wait, no, but you didn't, nobody, you, you don't know that when you first meet somebody. I knew that. Huh? I knew that. You didn't know that. That you lied to women and you cheated. No, I didn't yes, lie. Did. I didn't you lie. did lie. No. Well, how did I lie? You cheated. No, well, no, I didn't cheat exactly. Yeah, you had an agreement with, with Barbara. So with who? Susan. Susan. But all the others you cheated on. Uh, uh, no. Now, I don't think I ever cheated on my girlfriend of a long time. Because, but we broke up 11 times while we were together. So I can't remember when I was going out with somebody else and not going out with somebody else because we weren't broken up. Ah. But, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I was not the nice, you would not have been happy well, with that's me. That's what I'm saying. You would not have been happy with me because you're a very jealous person. I'm not jealous. And then you would say to me, how can you go out with her? Look, her eyebrow is higher than the other eyebrow. <laughs> Look, she hasn't shaved her legs. Do you know? <laughs> um, I just want to say... All my ex-girlfriends, by the way, when she sees pictures of my ex-girlfriends, she always has some kind of catty remark to make about them. And your point is... Huh? And your point is... But... It, uh, it's ten twenty six. I know. Just, you, uh, you got four minutes. Got don't, four you, minutes. I know. You're counting every I'm moment. I'm counting of it. every moment. You know. I, I. Anyway, the point I'm making is, is that yes, that please you, make you, your point. You have nothing but catty things to say about every woman that you've seen a picture of who I went out with. That's not true. At it all. is true. No, it's not. Well, uh, tell me one you said was uh, I, I just Alex. I don't even remember you were, the name. That names. you said, Alex. You were so lucky to go out with her. She was adorable. Go ahead. Alex, Come on. I don't know who you went out with, and I don't care. But, I, I went out with a lot of people. Well, I, but it's none of my <laughs> business, and I don't want to well, know. I'll tell you the reason I didn't get married for like fifteen years or over fifteen years was simply because I I I didn't want to have to cheat again on a marriage they cheat on a on a on a relationship that's binding but it was always on off on off on off on off i mean come on you know and then i when it when it would come back on again i would have to break up with all the women that i'd met in the interim listen to this what all the women it was all the women <laughs> yes um, unfortunately it was all the women <laughs> although there were some women i liked better than others you know there were some women that I... You dated I, some nutcases. Well, nutcases? The, the one that you were afraid of. One time you called me from her place and you were afraid that she oh, was going to yeah, kill you Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I left in the middle of the night on that one. <laughs> I thought maybe, you know... Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was it. I, 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 I could foresee it. I would have been their last spoken word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you called me. I got to get out of here. I, I've had a few that were pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. we all have. You know, I mean, I, I, yeah, I had one that was a nutball, but I couldn't keep away from her. There was something about her that whenever she was within my proximity, there was a smell she gave off or something that just made me want to jump her. I, and I can't tell you why. It probably was a smell. Everybody has there, that. No, it was, it was a thing. It was a musk or something. Musk, yeah. And I'm going, oh, no, she's not coming over. Oh, boy. I, 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 Alex, you're not going to have sex with her tonight. And the next thing I know, I'm having sex with her. She had, that, she had some kind of magnetism. And it wasn't that she was particularly gorgeous or ravishing or whatever. Uh, it was just, there was just something, you know. And I kept saying to myself, I can't do this. This is wrong. Can I roll over? No. That's what you said last night. Thank you. <laughs> no, you wouldn't roll over last night. La last night I could have used your body warmth, and I oh, there was man, no way was I was going to so even cold. get close to you because you were so you. I thought I was sleeping next to a mummy. I was not only under the covers, but I had three pillows on top of me. You did, didn't I, you? I did. Yeah, she was really. She was amazing. I was freezing. Amazing. Okay, if you wanna if you wanna roll over, roll just come over. on over here. Roll come on over to Alex. Over. Hi, honey. Hi. So good to see you, darling. Yeah. Uh, old people kissing, isn't oh, that disgusting? Huh? All right, okay. set up the phones. Well, uh, let me open the phones. Okay. 
All right. You know, and then we sit here and we wait forever for somebody to call us. By the way, Phil is not going to be calling it's tonight. It's a Phil-free night. And it's going to be maybe a Phil-free couple of days because Phil is having his prostate removed. And uh, he's going to give it to me. Uh, no, uh, he's having his prostate removed, and we're all wishing him the best, you know. Uh, we give him a bad time because, quite frankly, his political views are fucked, but uh, it, it doesn't matter. We really like him, and we wish him well, and I'm, I'm you know, I just, I, I, I do not want anything negative to happen to him. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's all keep a good thought out for Phil. And call for in. Phil. What? And call in. It's and, ten thirty. I I know. Can well, I say good night? You want to go? Wait a minute. Vernon Nunn is coming. Oh, Vernon, thank oh, you. Vernon's the first one tonight. Right. right out yeah, of the okay. right there out of the look at him. There he oh, is. That handsome. Son. Yeah, he see all the oh, ham yeah. radio <laughs> stuff. <laughs> there we go. And he does his entire his entire part of the show in Morse code. In Morse code. Yeah. <laughs> what 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 did you just dit dit dot dot? To us. I said, I said, G A B, Great American Broadcast. Oh, oh good. Go. See, isn't that cool? Right, oh, look. here, here comes John Perulis. You know, we got a lot of new people calling us, great. or old people that Pulling decided back. to start calling us again. Uh, John, oh, here we go. John, you there? There, there he, he is. is. Hi. There, Hi. There's John Perulis. Hey, How John. are you, John? I uh, think your wife is beautiful. You uh, should be very proud I, to have you. I, I, I am. Here, here. I, I realize that the thing is that these cameras aren't that clear. They have the Elizabeth Taylor uh, uh, gloss uh, you, you know, filter on it. Uh, the, yeah, I have. I have hers fuzzy, so that it. Uh, no, actually, for an old broad. Okay. Here we go. She's she's pretty in pretty damn. My wife. I'm, I'm my lucky. Wife punches me when I say start off four A. You know, so I start off with that phrase, I'm done, I'm finished. Well, the woman's 87 years old. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. She looks like she's 47. For a, what was it going to be, for a woman your age? For a woman your age. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for a woman your age. No, but, hey, Alex. Yeah, yeah. I got on the GabNet uh, uniform. Oh, That's boy, the official GabNet uniform. Yeah, there There's we go. No, here, here, here we go. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the old flannels. I got to tell you something. These are e easy to use. Yeah, who got uh, you into them? Yeah. Here, used to wear the sweatpants. Here comes Patrick. 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 Thank you so much for last night. You really great. offered us a great show. It was. Thank and you. And we watched it today, and it actually was as good as I thought it was. Yeah, uh, I, I saw it too. You know, uh, thanks to both of you guys for putting that on. And when I'm linking to it, I am linking to GabNet too to try to get people to watch the show. Because it's a real show. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're real people. We have real feelings. We have real stories to tell. And last night was a bellwether. I mean, that was, I watched that show and my jaw dropped open. You know, I couldn't, you know, I came in late to the show, but I did watch it but, right but you after. Got to, you, got to, I, you got to watch Clayton's. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I just said, holy smokes. And I yeah. blasted it all, all over my uh, Facebook page and, you know, all that. So you, you guys... Fantastic. And we got a lot of viewers after the fact, too, on it. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I it, it was it was it was good. Um, but it, it still, um, uh, you know, it was a great story that he had to tell. And in case nobody oh, heard it, yeah. Yeah. go back and Last either night. on Facebook or on YouTube, look at our at our pages and, and look yesterday. at the video from last from night last at the night. very beginning of the show. It is 19 and a half riveting minutes, okay? Yeah of, yeah. of somebody telling a story. And then he called the show. That was great. So that was the frosting that, on the it cake. It really was. So, thank you, Patrick. Yeah, and thank you to yeah. all of you who were involved in it last night. In fact, all the people here were involved in it last night, including the handsome gentleman with a beard who has joined us and the other handsome gentleman with a beard <laughs> who has joined us. Uh, and to talk to the ugly guy with a beard. Uh, with, with the trying to grow a beard. How you doing, Rob? Okay, how are you? Yeah, yeah. I went away last night feeling really good about that program last night, you know? Oh, you should, man. That was a well, fantastic show. It's, it's one of the times I say to myself, you know, this concept of the Citizen Panel really works, you know? And uh, 
Uh, it was everybody was participating in it, oh, except for Tony. He hardly ever says anything, unless you mention a comic book. And when I mentioned dog, Mrs. Grundy uh, in Archie, all of a sudden his his eyes lit up and he had something to say. Or but, a dog. Uh, or, or or his dog. I I don't want pictures of his dog. I've banned <laughs> pictures of his dog from my Facebook page. I don't want to see that mutt, you know, that mangy cur. How's that, Tony? Uh, but uh, anyway, that ought to get him to call. <laughs> yeah, they should get him to call. Well, I like Tony. You know, he's he's okay. He's Tony's fine. Tony. Tony's Tony. Uh, and uh, in, in fact, what was it? We the how I met Tony. Tony used to call the show all the time. And then finally, I was having a, we were having a big party here, kind of when we first moved in. And yep, so we, we invited yeah. about, what, 100 people yeah. or something to come to the party. I'll show you how big the place is. They all fit comfortably here. Mm -hmm. And we held this big party. And he said, can I come? And Albert on the air says, uh, you probably remember this too, uh, Patrick. Albert says, yes, you can come to the party too. If you, come in, your uh, if you come in your pajamas, in your in your footy pajamas, or what do you call them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was the footy pajamas or onesies. Well, his like onesies that. or whatever. He did, but he came, but he didn't show up wearing that. And, and uh, Albert was about ready to throw him out. <laughs> you know, you, you, didn't, you didn't you didn't show up in your onesies. You know, you didn't show up in your footy pajamas. Out, out of here. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, but that's that's how I met him, and that's the last time I met him. I don't think I've ever met. No, I haven't. I have not been in the same room with Tony since then. Uh, he goes over to Shecky's, my friend Shecky's, occasionally, and I, I'm never there when he's there. Per, uh, a, uh, a, a chance, a chance, non-encounter, perhaps. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, but. Uh, and I've only met, actually, I, I think I've only met Rob once, right? We had dinner here. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We had to a restaurant. We hung out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In Harlem? Yeah. Yeah. So the next time you're Where was in, I? next time you're in New York, come on over. Yeah, let's do it all again. Went to dinner. Huh? Oh, we all went to dinner? We all went to dinner. Oh. Remember, we went to Cecil's. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's when it was a restaurant. Yeah. Now it's an empty restaurant. No, it is a restaurant again, I think. But I think for private no, parties. No, I think it's a restaurant really? again. Yeah. But. Let's do dinner again soon. You're coming I, into New York, you said. Sorry? You're coming into New York. Talk to them into the mic. You're coming into New York, yes? Uh, Easter Sunday. Oh, That's yeah. like two weeks. Yeah, but yeah. then he turns around and goes back home. Are we going to see you? Yeah. No, well, because we're not. We're there for a quick hit. That's the problem. Right? Ah. Yeah. You're far from where my brother is. And we're only there for a quick hit because there's no days off or anything. It's just Where's your drive. brother live? Eastern Long Island. How east? Uh, Bohemia. Is that, is that the southern fork? Southern, not that far out, no. Okay. Southern yeah. fork. It's uh, out past uh, where you get, it's probably about 20 minutes east of where you get the ferry to go to Fire Island. Well, you can get the ferry in many places, but you sure? Bayshore. Okay. About 20 minutes from Bayshore. Bayshore yeah. minutes east. We go, that's where we go. Yeah. We go to Bayshore. Right yeah. I used to have a house on Fire Island, and I used to take the... the Bayshore. Seaview, uh, sea sea view, I think yeah, it was. That's, that's, that's where, where we, we stay. Is in yeah, that's where I had a house there in the Seaview. Yeah. Had. In fact, Red that's day. where all the Jews stay is in Seaview. It's awesome. It was quiet. Yeah. Oh, it's very quiet. Beautiful, beautiful. You were about you go, you go to the uh, town. To you go to the beach. town next to it, though, which and is a singles town, and people come yes. in for the day and drink. Uh, what's the name of that place? What's the name? Uh, 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 oh, 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 something ocean, with ocean, an ocean, ocean view. Ocean, ocean view. Yeah. Ocean view. Ocean view. Yeah, and then there's one next to it, on the other side, that also has like a big restaurant and a party time restaurant and so on that people go yeah. to. But in Seaview, it's like it's a bunch quiet. of old Jews looking up yeah. at the sun going, hot. It's, it's quiet. quiet. It's hot. It's nice. Beautiful house. It was so nice. Yeah. Beautiful house. Yeah. And we used to have happy hour on the beach every day with chips and salsa and frozen drinks. Oh, mm. it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I had a house with four women, me and four women, and, and they did all the cooking. And oh, it wonderful. was just a great summer. I went out there with uh, my friend Bruce David a couple really? of times in the early days. Yeah. And we would, uh, he, somebody would have a house and we would just stay there for the night. And um, that was when Bruce, my good friend Bruce, uh, he didn't have a good way with women. Uh, he was going out with a woman in 
fire on Fire Island. They were walking down a pier, and she said something to him like, you know, no, I don't want to fuck you. Uh, so he threw her off the pier. Really? He just pushed her. <laughs> threw her off the pier. Yeah, yeah. That's where I had my brush with Tony Randall. Yeah. We uh, in '97 we rented a house yeah. right there in Seaview, and he was right down the street from us. But his house was back. He had this huge deck that he rented right on the beach. Oh right yeah, on, right noticed. on the corner of our street. But he had like the corner lot right there. Yeah, and we, you know, I got to meet him and his wife, and at the time his his young wife and his baby. And he was this doting father taking care of the baby in the carriage while his wife ran into the stores in town. And then he'd be laying on the beach and Felix Unger was on the uh, was on the deck cleaning the table singing. You know what I mean? It was Felix Unger. (laughs) I turn around. It's. It's Tony Felix. Randall, and he's cleaning the tables just like Felix Unger singing. And I'm like, isn't this crazy? The only time I ever met up with Tony Randall was I was on a panel uh, in New York City. And I can't remember what the topic was, but uh, it got around to marijuana. And we were all discussing it and whatever. And some guy in the audience came up and gave, handed Tony Randall a joint. <laughs> Now, here's the question. What did Felix Unger do with the joint? Put it in his pocket. Exactly. He put it in his pocket. I'll have it later. I'll have it later. All by myself. I'll never forget that. He put it right in his pocket. He didn't even think about it. Just boom. You know, thank you. You know. Eat. Yeah. But, uh, um, before it, was that like uh, before the 90s, before he had a family? Uh, I think so. It may well be. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, other guy that I met, the other guy I met, you know, you want to say, who have you met which, uh, that you, people would be amazed that you even met him, was Walter Matthau. <laughs> I was up at Lake Tahoe. There was a comedy show with the comedians uh, all up there. It was kind of a comedy, a bunch of stand-up comics all doing a show at uh, uh, the, um, uh, what, what's, 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 what's the one, Caesars, Caesars in Tahoe. And um, all of a sudden, because he knew a lot of people there, Robin Williams shows up. And he was up in Tahoe doing a movie with Walter Matthau. You remember they did a picture called The Survivors, I think it was called, or something? Mm. And uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he, he brought Walter Matthau, and the two of them were backstage with us. And uh, it, it, you know how some people are actors, but they play a character? That's their persona on screen. Mm-hmm. No, that was Walter Matthau. Right, pretty that much. That was Walter Every, Matthau. Just, he looked like uh, a big, uh, huge uh, hang dog. Yeah. You know, uh, but he was he was he was amazing. Like fortune cookie, and you know, those are great movies. Yeah, yeah. But he did a movie with uh, with uh, um, uh, what's his name with uh, 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 who do you call it uh, with uh, with, uh, with 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 Robin, and that oh. then Robin brought him by. Here's our guest star for tonight, Walter Matthau. So, you know, occasionally I'm, you meet people and you go, wow, well, I, I, I met Walter Matthau. <laughs> you know? Because these people are kind of inaccessible. You know, it's not the kind of person that he never ran around doing the talk show circuit, you know. Right, so true. I, so I was never going to bag, you know, Walter Matthau. Uh, the only other one that I bagged, I did bag for radio for serious, was... Uh, 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 Samuel L. Jackson, which yeah. uh, is another guy you don't hear interviewed all that often, you know, now that I think about and it. And Columbo. Oh, well, Peter Falk. That yeah, was one of my was, favorite interviews interview. of all time. Yeah. And with that, I'm going to say good night. Oh, all these no. gentlemen, <laughs> yeah. these handsome guys out there. Yeah. Mm, isn't that, good that's night, sweet. Guys. There was hardly a kiss. Air was between us during that well. kiss. <laughs> Comment. She hates me. She really hates me. She detests. Me. Don't you detest me? I hate him. Yeah. Hey, she's she's got the gabnet pants too. I oh yeah, no, that. we all have. This is the official gabnet garb. <laughs> Hello, Ray. Do you have the gabnet garb on Man, tonight? I, well, let's see here. Yes, no, Vernon Nunn has the jeans. gabnet garb. Yeah. I uh, did, but I changed my pants before I got on. How about you, Je- Je- <laughs> Jeff? Are you wearing it's the official <laughs> gabnet uniform? Sorry. Sorry, what are you wearing? Jeans. Uh, I'm actually uh, 
wearing something very black, and it was something that I usually wear when I exercise. Well, you know, the thing, <laughs> the thing is, I have these things on uh, during the day. And like when I wake up, I put them on because it's nice to run around the house in these things. And then I decide not to go out. So then I go, what a sh why should I put a pair of pants on? So uh, what I do, I was home four days this week. I wore the Gabnet pants uh, four <laughs> days. Today I went out. So I'm wearing just now I'm wearing navy blue sweats because I was already oh, out. Oh, because you're wearing sweats. That's almost a close second to the, to the uh, Gabnet garb. Oh, we yeah. have cats, and, you know, I don't want to get my work clothes all full of cat hair, so I change when I come home into something that I could yeah. not get full of cat well, hair. Well, I, uh, um, uh, I don't know. She started getting me these things, and I like them so much, uh, you know, since I never— Pockets? And, what? <laughs> Yours have pockets? Yes, they have pockets. Yeah, look. see, mine yeah, don't have pockets. I got to get, I got to get the <laughs> ones with pockets. I keep lots of tissues in them. Phone. I keep lots of tissues in them. That's an old man thing too. Mm. Tissues. Oh, wait a minute. I think Ray's going on, out to put on his pants, his gabnet no, pants. Old man thing would be to have a handkerchief. My father used to carry a handkerchief. Men don't do that anymore. Oh, a handkerchief. No, no handkerchiefs are out. Right. My dad always had a handkerchief. By the way, speaking of handkerchiefs, I got a question wrong the other day on mm. who wants to be a millionaire. And I usually take a, a great deal of pride in my ability to play who wants to be a millionaire. And the question was this. It said before uh, they had whistles, uh, soccer referees did what to say that there was a foul? They had the flag. Close, very close, very Summer close. Salt. Well, it it said to me, it said that they would uh, what they would, they would yell or they would shout or something. I built, I but felt it was something verbal. Okay, turns out they would drop a handkerchief. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I guess I got that wrong. Mm -hmm. I would have gone home with the five thousand. Did, did I win? Oh, there the we go. There, oh, those are very nice. Those are very mm -hmm. nice. I I don't want to be cremated in anything that looks like that. <laughs> I like that. Why not? That's not the way to go out. I guess. Oh man, you know that—that's like with white socks, you know, in uh, Bermuda shorts or something, you know, high, high, uh, knee-high white socks in Bermuda shorts. It's in the same boat. I don't want to be caught dead in that stuff. Yeah, but I, I respect you guys. I respect you guys for liking it. You know, I'm not. You know, it's just not me. They're so comfortable, man. Mm. So comfortable. Yeah. I don't put mine on because if I put them on, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, well, I'm in I'm in Atlanta today, and uh, I don't think you wear those kind of pants in in Georgia. In Georgia, can't wear them in Georgia. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, my my wife wants me cremated. Why are we, why is she <laughs> bringing this up? And, and I don't want to be cremated because, you know, I don't know if I believe in, I don't really believe in the afterlife, but if there is one, and I'm sadly mistaken, I would hate to show up totally charred to a crisp, you know? I mean, I'm sorry, no admission to somebody in your shape. Good point. Good Yes, Jeff. I want to end up. Uh, as a cadaver, really at the oh. at the laboratory and uh, for the university. <laughs> oh, so they can use you and chop you up. Yeah, and... let all the all the guys who want to go to medical school they have to they have to learn all the time. Well, you so you always been well, start here. Well, you've always been in the medical field, so that probably does appeal to you. Well, that's right. Plus, I got lots of parts in there. They gotta yeah, at well, least use them. You've been a continuing experiment for the last bunch That's of years. That's right. Today, right? So just oh, continue. yeah. What? It's a continuous experiment. What? Just don't get the uh, Abby Normal brain. <laughs> Abby Normal. That's right. <laughs> oh, boy. So what's been, let's see, what's been happening in the news? Oh, uh, they've just a huge, huge story just reported after, just after 10 o'clock. Oh, really? I didn't get it then. Andrew McCabe was fired by wow. AJ, uh, uh, by Sessions, Jeff Sessions, was, two days before his retirement. Uh, <laughs> now, who was this oh. again? McCabe? The, the, yeah, McCabe was fired, the former um, uh, Deputy FBI. FBI. Yeah. Oh, wow. Two days before his retirement? 
Sunday, he would turn 50 and officially retire. He was fired tonight at 10 p.m. Well, wait a minute. Does wow. he then not get his retirement? That's right. That's what? Yep. yep. That's Donald Trump for you. Mm. Wow. Donald Trump sent out that tweet to Jeff Sessions to get him to fire him, saying something to the effect of, this guy is coasting. He's got 90 days left before he collects his, uh, his pension. So he doesn't collect the pension? No. That's right. Oh, my What God. a fucking Nasty. asshole. What a yeah, motherfucking yeah. cocksucking. <laughs> That's our president. Well, I'd ask, yeah, I'd ask, and, and, I'd ask Patrick, is the happened. only Republican on the panel tonight, uh, how and he feels see, about it, but he doesn't like Trump much either. So, you know. See, Attorney General, because he, he's been himself, he has been a uh, victim of Donald Trump's ire. He's been embarrassed. Yeah, so why would he suck up to him? Right. I don't understand that. Uh did, did any of you today, guys? Alex? Did any of you guys ever think we would have government by Twitter? No. <laughs> no. He's going to be alone in the White House. He's going to be a solo dictator. He's going to be sitting there all by himself, hearing voices of former presidents. You know, just unbelievable. Yeah. What's going? Did you on? watch Morning Joe this morning, Alex? No, no. I don't okay. get. I, wait a minute. I, I don't get up anywhere close to Morning Joe being on. <laughs> Well, you can you can uh, through, you can DVR I'm, I'm, it, you know. I'm, I'm through here about ten, two o'clock in the morning, and I get to bed about three, and I wake up at eleven. You know? But anyway, the attorney for Stormy Daniels was on there. Oh, I saw the video on that. Yeah. He was asked point blank, "Was she threatened physical harm?" And he said, "Yes." Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Now there is now, a, there is my a, question is if yeah. Donald Trump says. I didn't do anything. Why is he fighting so hard not to let her tell her story? Well, why are they? Why do they care if the story isn't true? Why do they exactly. care if she? They're threatening a what was a hundred mil? A, a, oh, a twenty million dollar suit if she violates the agreement. Okay, and I'm thinking, why do you want to sue her if, if it's not true? Let her say That's what she point. says, and then you say she's lying through her teeth. You know. Well, wait a minute. wasn't Didn't uh, wasn't there uh, a pregnancy and an abortion involved in this thing? And no, per, uh, you know, no. I thought there was. I, no, uh, that's what I heard. No, no. I but she but let me tell her story in two week, uh, a week from Sunday to uh, Anderson Cooper on on uh, sixty minutes. Sixty minutes. Yeah, but here's the thing. I think the reason why the lawyer may have said that her life has been threatened is because that would make null and void the confidentiality agreement if she uh, felt her life was in danger. If it goes to a judge, that's what the judge would say. That null and voids the agreement. Yeah, yeah. So he's she's got a very good lawyer. I don't know if you've, you've seen this guy on the, on the, on the talk shows. Very yeah. smart, very intelligent, very well-spoken, and very direct, you know. Um, but it is interesting that for as much as he, you know, usually comes out and fights and yells and screams, he hasn't said a word about this. About this, yeah, yeah, yeah he's he really scared. has. Um, well, the, he has said it's not true, or maybe. He's, well, the other thing, the other thing, it doesn't make sense is we all know how much uh, braggadocious Donald Trump is. So why isn't he saying, "Yeah, I fucked her." How about those tits, huh? Yeah. How about Grab those tits? Pussy. <laughs> yeah, I grabbed those tits. I grabbed that pussy. Yeah, right. Exactly. Why, why exactly. is he denying it? You know, you'd think he'd be bragging all up and down about it. You would, th you would think that. so. What? <laughs> I tap that. I tap that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how about that? Huh? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just, um, I think that. You know, under normal conditions, I would say this is kind of like a sleazy little story and doesn't mean shit to a tree. But the fact that he is trying so hard to sweep it under the rug and he's trying to hide it, there's starting to become a little obstruction of justice going on here. There are physical threats being made against her. And, and the big one is the campaign finance uh, violation because in the, the eve of the election, his uh, attorney paid one hundred thirty thousand dollars to shut her up. Now, but that, how how can he claim he didn't know what was going on? Oh, I, the guy just did it. He 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 took it out as a home equity loan against his house. 
Would your attorney do that for you, Alex? I don't think so. I've had to take out a home equity loan to pay my attorney. Come on. <laughs> you know, are you kidding me? We just found a girlfriend added up how much money we've spent defending ourselves in this case currently. Thank God she took it from a home equity loan, and we paid most of it back. Over the last four years, four and a half years, ready? $52,000. Wow. Oh, holy but oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. So, oh, you'll get all that back, which is cool. I think we will, yeah. But, uh, boy, you know, they're, they're expensive. Mm -hmm. But anyway... Uh, I I just I want to hear I want to hear what Stormy has to say I I know he had uh, you know what I can't figure out is why she would have sex with him you know yeah, yeah he's a powerful man all of that but you know it's not like you're saying to yourself uh, hey I really got to get me some of that fat pudgy orange colored uh, orangutan it was ten yeah. years ago and also <laughs> yeah um, he might have paid her. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, but it's just like Judith Regan with that uh, uh, chief of police or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jack would know nothing to look at. You know, and, and it. Well, it, no, it I. I, I yeah, I asked her about that because Judith was is, is a friend of mine, and I we were out to dinner one night, and I said, "Oh, well, I said actually, I think I said it on the air at one point." I said. Uh, can I ask you anything? And she said, why well, he was she was going out with the, the chief of police of New York City. And I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, Carrick. Huh? Carrick. Bernard Carrick. Yeah. Uh, and he, he later became uh, um, what's his name's partner, um, former mayor Ju Gi Giuliani's Giuliani. partner in Giuliani Partners. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he wound up in jail. But I said to her, Judith, how did, did you sleep with him? And she went, oh, yeah, of course. I said, how could you? I mean, because if you ever saw this guy, he's like, you know, as Alec Baldwin described uh, Trump, kind of human derma, you know. <laughs> and and she said, uh, I'm attracted to powerful men. Mm. Mm. Enough said, you know. And uh, she had an uh, ongoing affair with him for a while uh, until uh, the whole OJ thing happened. And I think there was some kind of thing going on with Giuliani and Murdoch and trying to silence her about the suit against her. And, and he got involved, Carrick, trying to get her to not go after whoever. And uh, uh, she just finally, she broke up with him. But they were going together for quite a while. I could, and I said, Judith, and I, I like Judith a lot. In fact, to be honest with you, I found her incredibly attractive because she, not because of the way she looks her demeanor is in, privately is very kind of f interesting and fun okay um uh, and she said uh, uh i i asked her i said i just can't believe you did it i said this on we were out privately one night having dinner and i just blurted it out i can't believe you fuck bernard carrick you know <laughs> and and she 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 is of such good humor that she of course laughed at that and thought that was terrific you know but uh but there was a perfect example of an absolutely disgusting human being and power winning over and she said she enjoyed the power i said uh we're, 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 uh, what i don't understand is it doesn't give them any power um, in fact it gave her it gave him power over her because she's She's being. She wouldn't look at him twice if it wasn't for the power. So I don't get it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patrick, we don't get it because I think men typically go for physical versus intellectual or anything else first. <laughs> and I mean, you know, you, I don't. I don't think it's that uncommon for women. I mean, you look around at some of the couples that you see in the stores. And you look at some of the women who you would find attractive and who they're with, and you say, what the fuck? And yep. then you got to think, maybe the guy had got money. Maybe the guy is just a really great guy. And, you know, he's got already great quality, but he's not attractive. But she doesn't care. I mean, hell, I had, I had my ex with me for almost five years, and I'm in a wheelchair. Who the fuck would date some idiot in a wheel? I mean, I look at that and I go, what the fuck? So, 
you know, I mean, a lot of it, uh, men and women are wired differently with attractive, who they're attracted to. You, you would get and, down on your knees, Patrick, and thank God if you could get down on your knees to thank God. <laughs> well, I thought I would until I dated, uh, well, I shouldn't say dated, the first woman that I went out with after getting paralyzed was a clone of Mimi from the uh, Drew Carey show. Oh, and I met her on like Match.com or something, and I didn't know she was not fully honest on her whole deal. We talked on the phone. She sounded fine. I showed up, and here the three hundred pound woman <laughs> wearing, wearing black, so that she was slim down. Yeah, but she had eyeshadow on that was purple instead of the blue that Mimi would wear. And I'm, I'm there, and I'm thinking to myself, well, you're in a wheelchair. Um, you know, you, you got to take what you can get. Well, as, <laughs> oh, the, as, the, as the dinner went on, I was thinking to myself, you know what? I'm not any different mentally now than I was before. I'll be damned if I'm going to settle for anything. So I finished the dinner. I paid for it. Yeah. And got the fuck out so and that was it for 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 mimi or whatever yeah yeah and yeah. And, and from then on any woman that i've dated i've made sure that i was attracted to physically as well as you know yeah. intellectually and that. um and i really haven't had a problem so well you know i i don't care what your what your particular physical condition is the fact is, you're a very intelligent, engaging person, and and uh, that would be attractive, I think, to uh, to a lot of women. Um, uh, I'm sure for a moment they would think about the wheelchair thing, but I think once they started talking to you, they also would enjoy being around you. You know, so I arm people anyway when when they meet me, regardless, male or female. You're so. just a charmer. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, uh, I always, the thing that always got me attracted to a woman is if she had a sense of humor. If a woman doesn't have a sense of humor, I don't want anything to do with her. Uh, because that, it means something to me. Uh, number one, not that she'll laugh at my jokes, but the fact that she has a sense of humor shows a certain intelligence. I think uh, humor, uh, the ability to understand humor, not a pie in the face humor, but humor that has some intellect to it is is a sign of intelligence uh, how do you feel about that ray ray how long are you how long have you been married uh 25 uh, years 25 years yeah wow and and mm -hmm. to what and to what do you owe the success of that marriage <laughs> Uh, well, a lot of it is for a while. There was just uh, my wife putting up with me. Yeah. Um, she, uh, I, I think it's because she's from France, and they they understand people's weaknesses. Oh. They're, they're like forgiving in a way. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I honestly, I, I don't know, Alex. I mean, it hasn't been easy. It's a lot better than right now than it's ever been, but it's never been easy. I, well, I had some woman yeah. who, who called my show once, and she said, my husband is cheating on me, and I'm going to leave him. And my answer to her was, why? She said, because he cheated on me. I said, no, wait a minute. Uh, is he, um, uh, is he, uh, is he, does he treat you well? He, she says, oh, yeah, she, he treats me very well. I said, okay. Um why are you breaking up? Because he cheated on you with another woman. Are you going to let vanity ruin this marriage? You know, I just don't think that's ever been a good excuse to break up a marriage. And my husband cheated on me. Goodbye. You know, because that's kind of an ego thing. The better thing is to be able to say why and and talk about it, you know. But I don't have to talk to you about that because I'm sure you've never had that problem in your marriage, right? Never. I'm <laughs> Wait a minute, you said that with a smile. <laughs> looking behind. Uh, it's I, 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 I don't Hello, how you doing? Yeah, not right? too bad. Well, 
you can't really say that. It's been kind of a, a rocky road for me trying to find a new line of employment. But uh, okay, yeah, well, that. Uh, let me talk. Uh, let's talk about it in a second. I just want to finish up with Ray. So, sure, sure. so Ray, we won't bring it up any longer because we may not find out how tolerant she really is. And I don't want 25 years of a great marriage to suddenly go out the window because of a stupid talk show. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> That's all it took about marriage worth having, isn't it? <laughs> but look, you can't go 25 years with a marriage without having some rocks in the road. Of course, you know? that shouldn't be like a boulder-sized chip that blows out your tires. It, no, but, it, you know... Uh, if it is, then again, the marriage isn't worth it. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, what? It's been twenty-five years of never having an argument. Yeah, you know. who uh, you? The passive aggression has to have lied there somewhere in those two and a half decades of marital bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. It, <laughs> I do have something I'd like to say though regarding the uh, sessions thing. I don't know if you heard that uh, Sessions uh, fired McCabe. Yep. Just, just a day or two before his. Uh, Pension was collected. Yeah, was to be collected and all that. Uh, did you guys talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just I had my own two cents. I put on the uh, I put on the Facebook here. It's a it's a monologue. It's not very long, but I'm sure you'll like it. And uh, it's on my Facebook page, and it goes, "That's right, piss off a veteran law enforcement official. It's not like he'll come back later with the judge's blessing to receive his full pension and benefits, and additionally go out of his way with all that free time to bite the tiny hands that feeds Trump's fat." face and provide fellatio to his microscopic genitals. This is, of course, after McCabe in a fit of PTSD-induced rage and with the blessing of 90% of the American public, rips off Jefferson Beauregard Sessions' Keebler elven ears. This reminds me of the time I read in history class when Herbert Hoover pissed off all those World War I veterans camping out on the lot on the lawn of the White House by telling them to go home without any pensions and benefits. Yeah, wow. Good. Terrific. Yeah. Terrific. Um, Can I use that at an audition? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? With By the it? way, I'm let me ask you something, Ray. Are you good at auditioning? Because I was always yeah, ter- I am. I was always terrible at auditioning. It's just practice. Yeah. I guess. You know what I? Th- yeah. You, it, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And I've taken audition classes and I've taught audition classes. It's a totally different thing than actually doing the job. Well, well you know what it is? Uh, auditioning is a con job. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But then you get the job and you, you can then not. Then you do the work. Then you do the yeah, work. Yeah, but getting the work, you got to learn how to audition. But and I'm, it, it starts the minute you walk in the building. Yeah. Well, well, the minute you drive up in the parking lot. Rob will know this in the radio business. I knew guys in the radio business who were great at auditioning. They could get the job, boom, like that. And then they'd go on the air and they'd say, why the fuck did we hire him? Uh, I, I hired an actor like that once. I was directing a play. I hired a guy from New York. He'd yeah. been uh, off-Broadway twice. His name was in the front of the play, uh, published plays. And he was great at the audition. We started a rehearsal, and he was awful he couldn't remember a line he couldn't do anything i had to fire him yeah but and was, i had to do the part but, but he was great at auditioning yeah he was great at the audition what were you gonna say uh, uh rob i used to audition for voiceover commercials right yeah and it was the most nerve-wracking thing in the world I, sitting there in that room yep, waiting with yep, all those other people yep. and then you go in and they tell you to read something and, and they put you in a closet and my knees would knock and the paper was shaking in my hand i never got comfortable with it they used I, to have, they, I thought maybe i'll start drinking just have a shot it would calm my or whatever and then i thought that's not a good thing to do because it'll just I'll become a fucking alcoholic. I'll be successful, uh, and I'll become an alcoholic because I won't be able to go on an audition without a drink. Proving once again that unlike a bisexual, you can never have it always. Yes, Ray. I'm sorry, pansexual. I I just wanted to say that when I stopped getting nervous from auditioning and just doing it was when I didn't care whether I got the job or not anymore. It was just there to actually perform, which I enjoy doing, make contacts with people, and practice. And if I got the job, that was totally secondary. I didn't even think about it. And I, and then I got and then I started getting more work. Well, I used to go to these. And I'm smart. Yeah. I used to go to these auditions in New York. And sometimes I get a call from the person at the agency saying, "Would you come in and audition for us?" And I'd say, "Okay, sure." And one of the reasons they were is a lot of them were women who were doing the auditioning. And they just wanted to see what I looked like because they heard me on the radio. So they didn't, they didn't care whether they were going to give me a job or not. They just wanted to meet me. All right. But I would go down to these things and you know this. 
uh, and there'd be like a room full of people, and we all have our scripts that we're going in to read, all right? And then out of the side of your ear, you would hear somebody say, and your name? Orson Welles. <laughs> You know, and you just get you throw the paper in the garbage and walk out, you know, or, you know, Richard <laughs> Keel. Richard Keel was the guy that got all the work in New York City. And he would yeah. show up and go, I'm Richard Keel. And you would go, well, that's it. I think maybe I'm going to go have an early lunch, you know. But Back uh, in the 80s, I got an audition for a Hillman's mayonnaise commercial. Ah. And I'm sitting in this, this beautiful studio in, down, in New York City and uh, in the waiting room. And all of these people, they all knew each other. And they're talking about their kids and their grandkids. And then I hear this voice. And it's the guy who, who, is, who for years did the Hillman's commercials. And you recognized his voice. And then I felt, what the fuck am I doing here? Exactly. Well, I, I, I have no business being here. I hate that. But the next hardest part is reading the copy. Yes, they brought and me, I mean, one they, line. They brought me in once, and they sat me down. They said, now, here's the script, and I saw the script, and they said, now, would you read it for us? And they roll tape, you know, and it reads, um, Molly knows a lot about um, something knits, skinny knits or something like that. It, it has something to do with, uh, with the way wool is woven. But what she doesn't know is she has ho-hum mouth. <laughs> and when I and when I hit the ho hum mouth, as soon as I saw the ho on the page and the hum after it, I started <laughs> laughing insanely. <laughs> and he said, "Cut tape, uh, Mr. Bennett. Is there a problem? No, 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 no. Just uh, roll the tape again, and we'll try." Molly does. Mo Molly may know a lot about skinny knits, but what she doesn't know is she has. <laughs> <laughs> And, and they go cut, Mister Mister Bennett. Uh, are you having a problem there? No, let me let me just try it one more time, please. <laughs> Molly knows a lot about. Oh no! <laughs> and I just broke up completely. And the person said, "Cut." Is there a problem, Mister Bennett? I said, "Yes. This is the worst piece of shit I've ever had to read." <laughs> and they said, "We'll see you later." Thank you. Yeah, you just told them to give me five yeah. minutes while I get the giggle. Bring in Orson Welles or Richard Keel. We know they won't laugh at our stupid copy. Because they have no sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I, th that was my, uh, and I'm sure uh, our our good friend here, Ray, has has his own stories about auditioning. Oh, I have a lot of stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. ever have anything like that where the copy was so bad you couldn't stop laughing? Uh, no, I've never had that happen. That's why I was laughing so hard. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> Ho hum mouth. No, oh, somebody said Richard Keel from Moonraker. No, Richard Kiley is who I meant. Yeah, Richard, Richard Keel Kiley. was the big giant Moonraker yeah, Richard, guy. Richard Kiley. He oh, got he got all also the in uh, the one before that with the uh, underwater film. I can't yeah. remember the name of it. Yeah, yeah. James Bond, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who's the guy? Octopussy. Recently, there's a guy. What, what's his name? Trying no, that was later. That was one. Of I'm trying to remember the actor's name, but he does he film. does all the Mastercard commercials. Uh, he's the voice. He's been the voice of Mastercard for the last like fifteen years. Oh, Keel yeah. wasn't Happy Gilmore. No, no. Uh, no. Uh, if I, I, I wish I could remember his name. He was in. Uh, he was in the uh, Almost Famous. He was the yeah. the star of Almost Famous. Uh, and uh, his voice. I mean, that guy has made a fortune because these commercials pay good money. Oh man, do they ever! Yeah, but the voiceover world is very closed, as as you know. I mean, yeah. it's like you say, everybody in the room knows each other. It's yep. it's so hard to get into that small small group of people. And if you listen to TV and you listen to the animated shows, you can hear up. Oh, that's what's his name from uh, SpongeBob. Oh, and he's also on The Simpsons. Oh, and he's doing this commercial. It's well, like the SpongeBob, same dozen guys. Yeah, Sp SpongeBob <laughs> happens to be a friend of mine. Uh, oh, it, yeah, it, well, it, yeah. He, that, who is who is that? Uh, uh, I don't watch TV. Uh, what's his name? He's a uh, Tom Kenny. Canadian. Tom Kenny. Yeah, Tom Kenny. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tom, yeah. Tom uh, is great, and so are a couple of other people that I know who do it. They're lucky to be in it because what's yep. happened with animation now is they give all the voices to actors whose voices you yeah. know. And and you kind of go, gee, you know, it used to be like there was this small crowd. It was like, you know, Dawes Butler, Mel Blanc, uh, and a couple other people. Uh, June Foray, who just died recently, she was 
she was Rocky the Squirrel and you know Broom Broomhilda and all the Warner Brothers cartoons and but it was a it was a federation of people who did voices for commer- for cartoons and now they go out and they just hire actors oh you know starring the voice of yeah you know and I I kind of hate that because I like the fact that Tom Kenny got his job because he did this great character voice you know. I took yeah. lessons with Nancy Wolfson for a while. Mm-hmm. You know who Nancy is? No. She's yeah. she's quite a like a titan in the industry. She worked in uh, she was a uh, uh, what, uh, she was an agent for a while. She's she I had so much I I gave up. I'll be quite honest with you. I I couldn't take her classes. I went through a whole bunch of them, and I got really frustrated. And finally, after a while, I just said, you know, this probably isn't for me. Um, well, yeah, she, yeah. It was difficult. The thing is that, that – I had gotten lucky. A friend of mine who I worked with in college radio mm-hmm. got a job where his job was to hire the voiceover people for the Maury show. He calls me up one day, and he says – Hey, he goes, you do voiceovers. Come on in. He goes, I, I'm, I, you know, I pay this guy a ton of money to do it. on the next Maury, you know, that guy. Yeah. And he brought me in. He gave me a bunch of scripts. There was like four second one, an eight second one, a 12 second one, and then like a 15 second promo. And I couldn't do him. I couldn't do him. He was giving me direction in my ear and I couldn't interpret what his direction was. It was a subtle thing that I just didn't feel. And he told me, he said, dude, I, I, I don't know. I'm giving you the same direction I give the other guy, and he gives me what I need. You're not giving me what I need. I was <laughs> and it was, something, it was something very simple. Uh, you know, I don't remember. It was just 30 years ago. But he said, hey, man, you could do it, right? You're a friend of mine. I'm, I'm going to give you the money. The most money I've ever made in voiceovers was I was the voice on um, seven of the first eight HBO One Night Stands. And to this day, I get paid. I mean, this is like 20, 25 years later, and they still pay me like for the Bill Maher one they're running on the HBO Go. Uh, and, you know, I got a check last a couple of weeks ago for like 79 bucks. Not a lot of money, but you add 79 bucks over. And then I had a lot of other shows earlier on. I had like those seven shows that kept paying over and over and over and over. So it's not a bad it's not a bad thing if you get a little something like that. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> and then they pay you sometimes not to work, oh, which is a nice thing. I had you- a friend. I had a friend of mine who was in a film, the late. What was it? The Lady in Red. His name is Steve Kravitz, and he had done a couple of movies. He was in some Clint Eastwood film, Dirty Harry film. Uh, but he was in this thing. He went in and he did this part for the Lady in Red. And they never used the scene. They cut him out of it completely. But his name was in the credits. If you go look at IMDb, Stephen Kravitz is listed in the credits for Lady in Red, and he never appeared in it. So go figure. Yeah. Hmm. Does he get paid for that if his name is in the credits? Uh, yeah, sure. So he didn't appear in the movie, but he got paid anyway. Yeah, no, he got paid, I guess, whatever scale was or whatever. But anyway, so... Uh, it's interesting. There are actually three announcers here <laughs> on this show. So, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I often said that I used to go to after, uh, meetings and that the room tone in the room was different than the room tone anywhere else. If you went to like, you know, a steel workers union meeting, everybody's going, hey, blah, 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 blah. but it, after a meeting, it's like, blah, 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 yes. blah. Brother, the baritones are out. Yes, for the right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we had another dog incident. Yeah. Uh, another one? Another one. Oh. Uh, the plane so. actually realized that the dog wasn't supposed to be on the plane. So they landed in like Omaha, halfway between where they were going, and let the dog off and then sent him back. And by the way, that dog that wound up in Japan, they sent him back by a private jet. Oh, geez. First class, I heard, yeah. First, yeah. well, private jet, you know. Yeah, wow. 
It's a dog's life. Yeah, I wonder. I want to say, yeah, yeah it's a like, dog's life, Mister Loman. <laughs> yeah, would you like the kidney and liver, or would you like the? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that phrase should be changed to a cow's life. Yeah. Or something. Now let's we find out why eat. in the world, Brian, you lost your job. Yeah. Now you may remember when we last left Brian, which was a long time ago because he hasn't called in a while. Uh, he was um, hauling uh, human organs around, right? That's right. Yeah. So, so what happened? Well, so when you work uh, this particular venue, you mess up once by uh, casually conversing with a client, and the client is the one who's. Uh, and this was a, a hospice care delivery, and there, the nurse was there as well. The, the client was, uh, you know, are in the hospital for three months because of all the water weight he had gained and subsequently had to get removed. And so he was a little burnt out, and I could understand why. And, uh, you know, he was middle-aged, and, uh, um, and he's, so he was telling jokes, dirty jokes and all that. And, uh, and I was laughing, and I was kind of just saying... Uh, egging him on a little because you know I, that w I was amused i was entertained and then i uh, come to find out a few days later that the nurse had reported me and my account with that particular uh outfit uh had been terminated why because you do just because you talk with the guy yes and then uh subsequent that in addition to my having had it because this happened to me uh a very similar uh instances like this happened to me twice before and um finally i had enough wrote a wrote a scathing review of my employer on indeed.com they found out about it and i just basically said uh, oh, listen i think you're a jelly spine coward who has no conviction whatsoever and that yeah. was it well so so you lost your job because you talked to somebody in a nutshell yes yeah i mean it was or was it be mm. what, what were All you right. going to say ray or was it because of what you wrote on Indeed? I think it was a little. I think it was more the latter than the former. You know, something. You know how employers are. Why did why, why did you no, write? I'm not. I think it's. I'm not giving you a hard time, but I was just, just trying to figure it out. <laughs> why did you Why did you uh, write that about your employer? I mean, why did you feel it was a good idea? Because I had enough. Oh, okay. So you were ready to lose the job anyway. I was ready to, metaphorically speaking, break out my AK-47 and start wasting some fuckers. Oh, well, uh, let's not say that because some people are going to oh. take that seriously. And before Let we know it, somebody's out at your house. As far as I'm concerned. You know, the eight... fucking weenie ass douchebags. Yeah. You don't have an AK-47, do you? Not that I can't even afford one. <laughs> you don't want to pot the <laughs> so, uh, so you're looking for a job now. Indeed, I am. And and what kind of job are you looking for? Because not every day they want people to haul organs around. Anything I can find that doesn't involve interfacing with the mass public at large for extended periods of time. I could never go back to retail for that very reason. Why? Because you wouldn't last five minutes in that, right? No, I would not now. Ten, fifteen years ago, I would. Five yeah. months at least, yeah. I would last, but not. Yeah. So hey, my should, age uh, has expanded, but my patience has dwindled. Yeah. You, you should Google Slab City, S-L-A-B City. And there are a bunch of kind of down and outs who have YouTube channels. And they're claiming uh, with YouTube ads, they're making twenty-seven to 3700 bucks a month. Check it out. You, uh, Slab City, all these weird people will pop up. And uh, some of them have pretty interesting stories. What kind of job is it? It's a YouTube job. Just they they just subsist on YouTube ads. I you see. know, yeah, uh, really, yeah. Well, how do you do Check that? Oh yeah, you've got to get more than three people at a time watching you. Oh, you got people. I remember when I was doing yeah. that job. Still, about a few weeks before I before we parted ways, I made a delivery to a hospital. And I was talking to one of the uh, staff aides, you know, on the lower end of the what I call the scrotum pole. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, because if you here's the thing, I have a thing about this, the totem pole. I call it the scrotum pole, scrotum pole, because if you manage to uh, 
reach to the top. You might just have a ball or two. That just that is unless of course you gag the death before getting there. Right. But nevertheless, we were talking, yeah. and he was telling me about the nature of his work and how he has to work with uppity doctors who think their uh, title. No offense, Jeff. Uh, who think their titles are you know god godly and that they're little tin gods who walk around and you know bless everything, and. Uh, and I was saying, you know, it's funny that these people act the way they do, and yet they make a fraction of the amount of money that someone, say, like Logan Paul would have made before all this controversy with the Japanese suicide thing hitting the fan, you know? <laughs> he's far less qualified than they are to do an operation, but he's making a sh or he was, a shit ton more money than them. Yeah. He yeah. could retire several times over at his young age of 22 or 21. I, Fuck you. Yeah, I don't... Fucking up any motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, hey, I gotta get my dog. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, I don't. I, you know, I, I don't know if I were to go looking for a job today, which I've given up totally because I just figure, you know, why be insulted by the fact that when I walk in the door, the person at HR looks at me like I'm a Martian, right? Uh, uh, look at Gramps. He thinks he can get a job here. You know? Yeah. Well, Gramps knows. Hey, Alex. Than you do. Hey, Alex. Look at me. I got a job at Home Depot. You could be a greeter. <laughs> did you really? Did you get a job at Home Depot? Heck yeah, I did. Yeah. Wave your hand at people, extend your middle finger, and jam it right up their ass when they piss you off. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'm even too old to be a greeter at Walmart. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think you have the temperament for it. I know I don't. And I'm 36. Yeah, well, I, but knowing you, you'd pull your penis out to everybody that walked in the door. You know, <laughs> and open wide, motherfucker! I'll jerk right off in there. Yeah, save the trip for the can. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh. You know, I listened to the show last night that we did, and I went, "Gee, that was so good." You know. I, <laughs> oh, look at that cute puppy. The dog appeared. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and then I dragged the conversation to hell. I know. No, but I, you know, I, and I sat there and I listened to it and I went, you know, I would love to offer this to radio stations because it's was a show like this was so good. And yet I'm going, they won't listen to me. You know, they'll dismiss me because of my age immediately out of hand, you know, plus it's too real for them. Plus I have to find a radio organization that isn't going bankrupt. <laughs> I mean, well, you knew that you called iHeartRadio a while ago. Oh, I said I'm it was going bankrupt. Yeah. I'm, I remember what you said about it. I'm surprised that, cu that Cumulus hasn't gone into bankruptcy. Have they yet, uh, Rob? Yeah, and then that's why uh, yeah. I'm is retiring. Oh, okay. So, so they, yeah, they're hurting. They, so you've got two of the biggest broadcasting radio broadcasting organizations in this country. I think the two biggest. Maybe Intercom beats them now because they bought up CBS, but. Two of the biggest radio organizations bankrupt. You never heard about that in the radio business. It never went right. bankrupt. You just simply cash to print money. What? License was to print license money. To money. Well, you know, it was that they, they just bought up everything that wasn't nailed down and, and paid much. And, and, and avarice and greed. Avarice and greed. They paid yeah. too much. Now they got these properties that they paid millions and millions of dollars, and they gotta they gotta rape it in order to scrape money from it. So that's why it's what you get. Yeah, yeah. It's really it's it's terrible. It's terrible. Legalized rape. Yeah. Well, I I uh, uh, so I you know, but I, I I if if it were like the old days and you had like people could only own like seven stations or something, you know, there'd be a lot more jobs for everybody. Good luck convincing Sandy Dick Hairpie to allow that. Sandy I Dick will Hairpie. tell you though, it's it would be interesting because back in the day when you can only own seven, mm -hmm. you, it, there was a much smaller uh, pool of people fighting for your advertising dollars. Today, everybody is advertising all over the internet. There's so many more places to spend your money, and so a smaller piece of the pie comes to you. So that makes it difficult. And that's what some people say is the reason why radio needed to consolidate that way because you really couldn't – there wasn't enough cash to go around for all the advertising that's now available between you know the new medias and all that. Well, I, I, I somewhat understand what you're saying. On the other hand, uh, it, 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 you never had in this business organizations going bankrupt. Because they had to show a certain fiduciary ability 
in order to get a broadcast license in the first place. That was part of the thing you had to show the FCC, your ability financially to run a radio station uh, at a loss for, say, three years without, uh, without you know, going under. And uh, that went away. And all of a sudden, these guys like iHeart buy 1,200 radio stations, and nobody cares whether they can afford to keep them going. And that's why they're going bankrupt. It's kind of like, think about this. I often said, you know, it's wonderful there are all these McDonald's and they're very clean places to go eat, right? But wait for the day that, that company goes, starts going under. You're going to have all these McDonald's turning into festering pools of filth and disgustingness because they can't afford to take care of them. It's the same thing with these radio stations. You really have a whole bunch of radio stations that are just terrible because they can't afford to run them any other way. Well, they strive for mediocrity because if you own seven or six in a market, you can't all be number one. So you, you try not to get in each other's way. And so oh, nobody well, sometimes, fights sometimes. to be a winner. They just fight to make a little bit of money. I know a guy that programmed a radio station, I think for iHeart, who was told... We don't want you to do well. And he said, why? He said, because we have another station across town that does very well doing the same format, and we want you to lose. Yeah, yeah that happens. You know, so, so if you're being told not to win, you know, I mean, when I was in this business, you just, you know, you, you, we were uh, nuts right. about trying to undercut the other guy and do a better radio program and get a bigger audience and, you know, Whatever. Here's our ball cutter. Would you like us to perform the amputation, or would you prefer to do it yourself? Yes, exactly. Patrick. You know, just thinking about, you know, and I brought up the Milwaukee station uh, yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I had owned six uh, stations, and they're all in the same building. Mm -hmm. They're about a mile away from me, and they're all different format. Um, and what... Uh, when I, what I mean by that is one of them is an AM talk station, and the other five are different music stations, and they're all very different from country to R&B mm -hmm. to whatever alternative is today mm -hmm. to eight rock, and then I think another one is my light rock or whatever, you know. Um, right. And they all seem to be doing fairly well but to your point of don't you know don't uh, don't do well. I can see that happening within that building, especially with the music station, because if there's five of them competing, even though there's different format, um, you know you may have a problem with you know uh, the different host and popularity and things like that. It. I don't know. It seemed like a clusterfuck to me. Yeah. So the AM station doing great, and that's the only one. Well, it does great in the ratings, but if it's yeah. uh, most of the AM talk stations are aimed at old people yeah. over fifty-five, and there's no, you can't sell that. Madison Avenue doesn't believe that anybody over fifty-five spends money. I guess on radio. Yeah. So, uh, yes, Ray has his hand up. Uh, uh, Alex. Do you know what happened to KGO out here? I mean, they just destroyed it. Destroyed it. Do you have any idea what, what it was? Okay. First of all, the first thing, that the KGO, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this so that uh, we put a little, yeah. we have a little history for people to relate to, yeah. was maybe the most successful radio station in the United States. It had been like number one in San Francisco for 35 years, I think. And it was a talk station. And all of a sudden, one day they went from uh, uh, they went from doing the ratings the way they were doing it, which was a diary method, where people would like write down what they were listening to every hour. Like that's going to work. Like people aren't going to wait to the end of the week and then fill it out, and they fill it out with the thing they think they listen to the most. Uh, and they went to a thing called the people meters, which are a meter you have on you that picks up a sub-signal on the radio station and accurately can tell when you change the station, it will record that, okay? It hears everything you hear, okay? And all of a sudden, they went from being number one to like number seven or eight because all of a sudden they found out that the way they were popular was because the old system favored them. 
But the new system, which was far more accurate, didn't. Uh, and so then when, was, they, yeah. when they went down to seven or eight, they started getting flop sweat. They didn't know how to deal with that. And then it got worse and worse and worse and worse. And then they sold it out to Cumulus, and they did it even worse. And now I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're like number 20 in the market. It, it's mm. it's terrible now. The only good shows left are you know weird hours on the weekends when they have like uh, what's the the comedian up in Marin? I forget her name. Um, she has a good show. The people they don't pay basically. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's everybody though today. Yeah, yeah. And then they have everybody like these canned, they have these you know they re they replaced Ron Owens with some canned terrible yeah, awful exactly. show. I mean, it was a great station. I, I mean, I used to listen to you in the morning, and then I would listen to KGO the rest of the day, all the way into the night, and it was fantastic radio. And then, yeah, now it's gone. It was the king. I mean, it was the station, for instance, that when I was doing a show, I was competing against. You know, they yeah. were the main competitor, uh, and um, uh, they did a lot of nasty stuff where if you were the other guy, I mean, like I had a hard time getting guests for the show because they had to have them first, you know? Right. And so if a guy came in for the day, he wasn't going to stay overnight just to do my show. Okay. So, I mean, it, we had a lot of problems that way, but that station was very, very popular. Yeah. And, um, I, uh, I just, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it is the fall of a, of a great radio station. But what's interesting about San Francisco, and this is the only place in the United States where this happens. Do you know what the number one station is? N NPR. Or yeah, that's uh, right. K KQED. Yeah. KQED is the number one station yeah. uh, uh, in San Francisco. Yeah. And it's an NPR station, folks. It's, it's non-commercial. Mm. Because what happened was they never... Uh, rated the non-commercial stations in the past. They considered it just a service to all the advertising, uh, ad revenue broadcasters. And then they decided, oh, well, let's also see how many people listen to KQED as well or the, or the non-commercial stations. And all of a sudden, I think KQED was came in like at number three. And then as time has gone on, it's like number one now in San Francisco. Uh, they can't make a penny off of it. But, you know, they number one. Nevertheless, they're probably pontificating upon how, uh, collectively speaking, they can unzip their flies and plop their fat dicks into that proverbial soup. What? This is, uh, this is by the way. Whoa, I'm talking about advertisers, money, mo money mongers. May, oh, may, QED? May I, may, may I, I the people who are looking at QED and saying, oh, it's a profitable now. May let's, I please announce here and now, folks, if you've never heard the show before, Brian is an interesting human being, and his <laughs> way of describing things is, 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 is no less again. than amazing. <laughs> Life is. By the way, uh, Forbin Colossus, who writes on our chat room verbosely, uh, mentioned the, the announcer that I was looking for for, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, MasterCard, it was Billy Crudup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's Billy been Crudup. doing MasterCard forever. Yeah, and the residuals on that must be great, just great, you know. Oh, they are. Yeah, and it's such easy work. I mean, once you get it, uh, that that work is so easy. You're done. You're in and out of there in an hour, and you get paid big bucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. You, you get paid like I don't know what the structure is now. It used to be you got like five hundred dollars for the first time it played, and then for the next thirteen times it played, you got another five hundred dollars each time. This was on networks. Yeah, and if it's somebody famous, he might have something be more work, you know, better worked out too. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. He you mean might. like uh, Donald Sutherland doing all the car commercials. Yeah. He yeah. must. Oh, get him uh, out John years. Hamm does Mercedes. Yeah. You know. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, Morgan. Peter Coyote. Hey, is it true? Uh, I heard that Peter Peter Coyote never does a second take. He reads a script, and that first take, that's it. I, I have heard him speak live, and I believe that. He never mm. makes a mistake when he speaks. He, his grammar is always perfect. He never stumbles over any words. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. You know, that was his, what, digger name? He was part of the diggers. Do you remember the diggers? He was a digger. They used to, the, for those of you who don't know, in the summer of love in the late 60s on the hate. The diggers were a group of really cool people. They used to drive around in a pickup truck, 
throw out food to people and money. They'd throw out dollar bills, five dollar bills. You know, just shower yeah. in the street with this. And, and, you and, know, people. and Peter Coyote, I don't know what his yeah. real name is, took that name as a kind of his digger name uh, and yeah. maintained that name when he went into acting and voiceovers and everything else. You know. Yeah. 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 I miss Scoop Nisker. Oh, Scoop I Nisker. Yeah. I think he's a Buddhist Zen monk now or something. You know. Yeah, he was on uh, what? Uh, uh, oh, one hundred four point five for years. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. He yeah. had a he had like a byline or something. Uh, you yeah. know, and his tagline was, "If you don't like the news, go out and make you go some out and make your own. own. Make some of your own. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yep, that's right. Well, that could be interpreted the wrong way too. Yeah, right. <laughs> make, up some, make up some of your own. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, we Alex, live in insane times. You know? Alex, do you ever talk to Buddy Love anymore or Richard? Oddly enough, B- Buddy Love in about two weeks yeah. is going to be staying here at my place for the oh, for awesome. a couple of days. So maybe I'll have him on the show or something. So oh, you got to, yeah. Here. I've auditioned with him a couple times for a couple for some car commercials. How do we explain Buddy Love to people? He basically <laughs> basically he's a singer. He has a he had a, had a band. I don't know is he still I guess I guess he's still doing it. Yeah. But, but the business yeah. is not what it was. You know, it used to be he could work every night he wanted to. And now it's kind of like, you know, once every couple of weeks and nobody wants to hire bands anymore, especially a guy who's singing like old standards and stuff like that. But he's uh, he he was he was terrific. He was great. In fact, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, we even sang together. Hold on a second. Where is it? Is it? Here? Oh, you used to sing when the shark bites. Wait a minute. Hold you, on. you guys used to sing that all the time. I guess I don't have it here right now. I thought I had it. I guess I got rid of it. Uh, but I. Uh, um, but you had, you had a big part in getting his his shows to sell out. I remember just because you would talk about them all the oh, time. Yeah, so I'd yeah. I'd go I'd go to like this venue or that and it would be packed yeah yeah you know, shark bites with his teeth there yeah we used to do yeah. uh, mac the knife and things like mac that the knife, yeah. yeah see but, the internet screwed everything up you yeah. know it uh, so much of the younger uh, audience 20 to uh, early 30s are uh, doing gaming twitch and you know shit well, uh, like that. yeah i mean this thing i use here which is That's obs because studio. we needed a reality other than this one well, to escape to. Well, well, the thing that I the <laughs> thing that I do here, the thing that I do here, I do using a thing called OBS Studio, and a lot of people use yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good one. But a lot of people use that to play their video games online, so you can see them live in real time playing games. And You've I, admitted to being a uh, gamer, Bennett, haven't you? Yeah, I, I you know, there's huh? certain games that I Not like and I, I enjoy, and I enjoy, uh, but. Um, I've got to admit that I've gone on to some of these places, got on the PlayStation, you can go to them, where people are literally live playing games. And it's, yeah. f- it's fun to sit there and watch somebody else play a game. I it, always enjoyed that. Even when I was a kid, I always enjoyed fa- other family members when they used to imbibe in the hobby I imbibed in. Yeah. Uh, I used to enjoy watching them play. And friends, too, when I had them over, when, when I had a social life then. Uh, and I, everything was more balanced. Yeah, I'm sure Jeff is a big gamer, right, Jeff? No, much like <laughs> uh, Vernon is a big gamer. He plays Morse code. Uh, yeah, there, there we go. Hey, that's right on cue. You know, hey, Alex, I used to have a pong machine. No, he he actually has his key right there. P- what's your call sign? In for U L. Hey, you know who else is a big gamer? Who? Two other people I can think of who are big gamers. Um, Charlie Sheen and Kevin Spacey. They play Dick Dad Ho. They, wh- what? Dick Dad Ho. Dick Dad Ho. Okay, fine. Uh, oh, leave, uh, leave it to Brian. Leave it to Brian. <laughs> Please, everybody, if you're, you live, where do you live again, Brian? You're in, I live in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. If you live anywhere near Pittsburgh and you've got any kind of a job at all, Please hire Brian because, quite frankly, if he doesn't work for a while, he's going to kill somebody. And I really, I, you know, I, I. Well, I'll be civil. I'll do. I'll start as a radio host here locally. Says if you're going to kill a bunch of people, start with yourself first. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a radio host is that? Um, 
So, um, anybody have any? Uh, 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 what do you? I haven't asked Patrick really. What do you think about the whole Stormy Daniels thing? Do you think it's going to amount to anything? Because you're you're, you're always the naysayer. I don't really think it, it's going to matter. Um, you know, I, I think I made a comment last week that um, in far as the Trump supporters go. Nobody's going to care because the evangelical um, voted for him after yeah. his pussy grabbing comment. An affair that happened before he was president uh, 10 years ago is not going to bother them one iota. Out of the White House, yeah. And, and the other thing is, um, I think even if this, even if it goes to court, even if they have to settle, it, all of that. It's a private matter, and I, I think it's not going to matter uh, for the presidency. Um, they certainly can't um, uh, impeach him over this. <clears throat> uh, it, 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 it had nothing to do with his job. It took place prior to. This is all private shit that happened in the past. So I, I think a lot of what the people that don't like Trump are hoping for is not going to happen. And, you know, it's the same with the impeachment and all of that. I mean, I'm very skeptical of all of this shit because I was one of the loudest voices on your show two years ago saying there's no fucking way they're going to elect Trump, anybody. Well, he's elected and frankly... I think he's going to be president for two terms. And that Oh, no. Uh, uh, Never <laughs> underestimate the stupidity of the American people. Yeah. And Who the ignorance as well. Years. You can call it stupidity or you can call it history. I mean, it, 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 it's very rare that a president has not been elected to a second term. And frankly, just like I said the other night, like what happened in the uh, district in Pittsburgh where the Democrat got elected, it had very little to do with politics of Republicans and Democrats. It had to do with the attitudes of the people who voted. And it was a 20% margin for Trump last year. Well, year and yeah, so many months. Yeah. Because those people are blue-collar workers and they were tired of, you know, just the, the bullshit. And, of course, Hillary didn't appeal to them. Yep. But they're regular... They wanted to change, and they didn't care where the change came from. Right, but they're regular Democrats. They're, they're blue-collar, uh, middle-of-the-road Democrat, and they went back to voting now with this uh, uh, congressional thing the way that they normally would, but Trump appealed to them... <laughs> Because Hillary offered them nothing, and they very much wanted to shake things up. And I, I don't think it's, it's a, a bellwether for anything. I, I think yeah. other elections in other states will be more ind indicative. Ray has his hand up, Ray. Yeah, uh, um, Patrick, I remember you saying that the other night, but uh, I went and looked, and Romney got 17% of the vote in that district uh, when he ran, just so you know. So... I'm not, I'm not totally sure that it's that so, that's so it's not that unusual. Myself. Yeah, it, it Rom wasn't. Romney was running against. Um, was it Obama? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Twenty twelve. And you he got was also think, running in 20, 2008, too. But. And you and, and you got to think about this. And, and I'm the last person that will bring race into anything. But if you've got middle class. Uh, just down home uh, steel workers and and that type of uh, person, they're probably looking past a black guy and looking for a white guy. Hey, uh, Patrick, that's why I remember, I vividly remember in 2008 seeing all the, this was in 2008, mind you, against McCain when he won the nomination over Romney. There were signs everywhere that read Democrats for McCain, a.k.a. I'm a racist fuckwad. Oh, and there <laughs> Serious. I'm like, I'm, I see it. I don't believe it. And I call them out on it. 
but I can I, I know it's there and I don't you know I don't make up my own reality unlike some liberals and a lot of conservatives do. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, but the, here's the thing though. Let you know, you mentioned McCain. Um, I didn't like the campaign that McCain ran because I felt that he was uh, he was he was too bent on trying to win and he was telling everybody what they wanted to hear and it wasn't the McCain that I came to respect. In 2000. Was, yeah, I mean, McCain was one of those those Republicans who I respected. Uh, and uh, he, when he ran, and then of the Sarah, what's her oh. name? You know. Palin. Uh, I mean, Palin. Palin, Palin yeah. I, you know, I mean, where where did that I come from? Well, who, 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 yeah, who <laughs> came who came up with that? Who came up with that terrific idea? But I mean, when I look at Trump, if I had to have a Republican man, why did we miss voting for McCain? <laughs> you know, I mean, however, we did have Obama, who I did not think was as qualified a candidate, to be honest with you. Um, because if I were, you know, if I were HR and I were hiring presidents, I would ask for people to bring in their resumes, and certainly McCain's resume was much better than Obama's. And so was Clinton's, to be fair, as far as experience oh, oh, goes. Oh yeah. Oh, he was he was he was, go he was governor of Arkansas twice, not once, twice. I mean, on uh, there was a time when well, he. Well, I'm talking about Hillary. Oh, you're talking about Hillary. She had, you know, she uh, her, was a senator. Yeah, New York. her yeah, her want, her resume you know, was terrific, on. but. I, I, I think she was, you know, there are people that are perfect candidates and there are people who aren't. And I don't think she had any of the qualities of a perfect candidate. I, she's, I, not, she's not genuine like. She, yeah. I, she always felt to me like it was forced and like she was forcing herself on us. That's how I felt. I voted for her because I didn't want to see Trump. But if I had to pick a Republican candidate that if I were going to vote Republican, I like Jeff Flake. Yeah. I like Jeff Flake. Like, yeah. He's sure. thinking about running against Trump in 2020. <laughs> I know. I, I like him because I like that he's calling out shit that is going on in his party that his fellow Republicans won't call out. That's because well, what about Rand Paul? You know, you, 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 you know what, the, what about Rand Paul? The problem is we live in such a divisive age that if you are a Republican, you feel you have to define yourself in a certain way and rigidly that way. Whereas years ago, you could be a Republican and be a, a liberal Republican. There was such a term. McCain was a liberal Republican. Or uh, a respectable right. conservative Democrat. That, that we wouldn't be sitting here arguing about gun rights as a left or right issue. You know, it was either a gun rights issue or a non-gun rights issue. But here we make it left and right. If you're on the right, you, you've got to stand up for the Second Amendment, by golly. You know, yeah. and, and I, I, I just see that. No, but I just see a lot of issues we have today that aren't left or right issues. There, hey, the Republican Party is a cult. Now it's a it fucking is. Cult. Yeah, it's yeah. A fucking cult. You know, Ronald Reagan was was Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was the uh, a huge advocate for gun control uh, it, when he was governor. Because he was afraid of the Black Panthers and other groups like that, and right, he right. was pushing for gun control. And th th I mean, you can't get any more Republican than Ronald Reagan. No, yeah. you can, according to the Tea Party. Yeah. Uh, well, but the Tea Party, I don't think, uh, represents the best of Republicans either. I, mean, I think a Jeff Flake is is well, I think, any more than Hillary represents. The best well, I think of, the uh, wonderful uh, thing about Jeff Flake left. is that Jeff Flake is a Republican, but he's a he's like he's like. Uh, Patrick here, he's a, he's a Republican that's reasonable, you know? That's old school, old, you know, they're willing to listen, they're li willing to compromise, they're willing to, to cross, the, you know, they don't... Bernie they don't, Sanders reminds me of a little bit reasonable. You know, it's zero or a hundred. Yeah. By the way... They just have no more power anymore. <clears throat> yeah. Let me bring up some, one other thing here. I noticed that when you stood up and walked in, uh, Rob, you've lost a lot of weight. I, 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Congratulations. Congratulations. I, I got 40 more to go. Yeah. Yeah. Can that. I ask how much you weigh now, or do you not want to say that? Here, I weigh, I was up to two, almost 252. Now, you're, sh you're, sh you're, not, you're not tall, are you? You're what? Five, uh, almost 5'10". Five, I'm oh, not quite, yeah. five, I'm a little over 5'9". So you were up to 250. And I'm 6'4". Because I'm 252, the most I ever weighed in my life. Because I got up to 244. And you're taller than me. Yeah, I'm taller than you, and I lost uh, 55 pounds. 
So I want to lose another 40 and I'm taking, we're going on vacation in middle of April. And so with this diet that we're on, you have to follow steps, right? Right now I'm in phase three and in phase three, it's Atkins diet. There's no carbs, right? Right. So we're not eating 500 calories a day. We're no longer injecting none of that stuff. We're just eating a, 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 a an Atkins type diet right. right now. No carbs. And at the Jeez. end of the month, by the 30th of the month, we'll be allowed to then start to add carbs slowly. This portion of the diet is now supposed to reset the hypothalamus yeah. so that we don't gain weight. Is this it supposed to, it's supposed to be zero carbs? Uh, very close to zero carbs. I mean, Rob, do you I mean, exercise? Because I know under Atkins, you can do up to 20 a day in the, in the yeah, initial uh, phase. Been really keeping it. What what I'm watching is getting on the scale every morning and making sure that I don't fluctuate two pounds one way or the other. They don't want you to lose weight. They want you to maintain. Well, so every morning we get up. Today I was down two tenths. Yesterday I was up four tenths. But since we've been on this since Monday and it's been right there yeah. with, within four tenths with, with, of with either me, I've had it. Two eleven. I've had a terrible thing where I have been doing about twenty carbs a day of one thing or another, but I can't lose weight, and I can't, and I'm not gaining it particularly. Some days I'm up, some days I'm down a pound, but I'm I I, I can't lose anything, and I think maybe it's the winter or something like that that's making it impossible. But you know, I I haven't gained anything. I'm you know. That's the important thing, though. You're not gaining. Well, I was as low. At one point, I went as low as 180, and that was when I was really depressed. But then I started eating again. I went up to about 185, 186, and now I'm at 189, and that's pretty much where I am every day. And I want to get down to 175. Yeah. Maybe that's your body's way, Alex, of saying that's where you need to be. All I'm saying is whatever you're doing is working, and it was good to see you looking thin uh, yeah, or thin, was, thinner. Is, I had a question for Rob, though. This is the thinnest I've been now in, well, since before I started my current job. Yeah. Uh, I'm wearing clothes that uh, I hadn't worn. I haven't worn it, and they're getting loose on me. So I'm working yeah. back down. What? You had a, a question, Brian? Actually, I may have a question for you, too, Alex and, and Rob. Uh, if there's any way uh, via Skype or Facebook, if you could message me what your respective diet plans are so I could lose some pounds myself. I'm six what? foot. 240 and 250 within that range. Just go, on, go on to Google and, and look up low-carb diets. and Just look and see what it amounts to. And then you have to kind of stick to that. Just don't take in carb, lots of carbs. And you will lose weight. There's no question about My it. diet is a controversial kind of diet. I inject what? myself. My wife and I, we both are doing it. Uh, injecting ourselves every morning with uh, something yeah. called HCG. Oh, and, and then with that, you're on a 500 calorie a day diet. Is this something that a prescription? You need a prescription for? Yes. Yeah, you said you don't exercise, or not as much that other. Can't. Not when you're I on. Don't know your name. You asked him that question. You can't. Not when you're on 500 calories. I could start exercising now. Yeah. But when you're 500 calories new, you can't. Well, I think that once we start getting some decent weather around here, and I can go out for walks. Yeah, it's almost the end of March, and we're still freezing See, our nuts I, off. I'm freezing. I, the other day, I went out, and I just said, well, I'll walk, just walk down the street. I thought I thought I was going to come back you know, and have to, like, uh, have one arm cut off because it had gangrene, you know, from the cold. It was that <laughs> yeah. bad. You need one of those or exercise bicycles, prospect. Alex. What? Yeah, exercise. You need an exercise bicycle, one, one you know. A normal bike that you could hook up to a Well, I, 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 used to, I used to have the joke that I, I have a stationary bicycle. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't meant to be. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's that's uh, what that's all about. Hey, you know, we're uh, kind of coming up on the end of this whole thing. Boy, not, nice night Get tonight. a rim job shot for that joke. Uh, no, uh, thank God Phil, Phil isn't here to play a rim shot. By the way, Phil, if you're listening... Uh, we, uh, you know, uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, in Where is he? It, 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 he's, he's out tonight uh, shooting some photos for a rock band or something. But uh, he, on uh, Monday, is going in to get the old prostate. Uh, they take a melon scooper and they, yeah, it's a very simple operation. You could audio record a rim job. Yeah. I would yeah. very much like to use that instead of the rim shot. Uh, thank you so much, John Palouis. <laughs> it's always good having you here. Uh, and uh, come back and see us again next week. Uh, Patrick, thank you so much for last night, and thank you so much for all the times you 
join us on this program. Rob Alfano, the voice of GabNet, thank you. Thanks, Brian, good to see you again. Call more often. Don't be so depressed because you're out of work. I'm out of work and I'm depressed, so we'll join, talk to each other about it. Uh, Vernon <laughs> Nunn, uh, we sign us off with some Morse code. There we go. And Jeff. He just said, fuck you. Jeff, no, I didn't. I said bye. Jeff's in Atlanta. I forgot to even ask him what he was doing in Atlanta. What are you doing there briefly? You just um, I seeing my sister. Seeing your sister. And Ray Renati. God, one of the nice things that's happened recently is being joined on this program by Ray. Thank you uh, so thanks. much. I hope we'll see you all again next week. Why don't all of you, uh, you know, kind of like wave a big goodbye to everybody so they can uh, they can see you so happy, smiling, and all of that. Bye bye. That's our citizen panel for this this night and this week. They will be back again uh, next week, uh, hopefully a lot of them, and uh, hopefully you will join them. All you have to do is go over to gabnet.net and you can find out all the ways you can do it. In the meantime, next is the intersection with Rob and with Rob, with, with Jack and Amy, followed at one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time by Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again on Tuesday right after the exchange with Damian Chaplin at 9.30. At 10 o'clock, I'll be on. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody. <laughs>